Okay, topic two. So, first of all, we have a few keywords that we need to know and know their definition. Also, so current rate of flow of charge, the units is amperes or amps, and the symbol in, in equations is little i. But of course, the units is a. Um, you've got voltage. Another word for voltage is potential difference. You've got resistance and charge. So all of these, make sure you know their definitions, quite straightforward, and their symbols. Charge is coulombs, but the symbol is Q. Um, okay. Here you have a standard circuit. As you can see, there's a cell here. This One of these is called a cell. But if you have two cells next to each other, that's a battery. Now, very important that you have to make sure they both have the same orientation. So like in this scenario, don't flip the other one. So you have to make sure they both have the same orientation. Also, the longer side of the cell is positively charged. So it, electrons always go this way. The charge travels in this direction. Or sorry, the current flows in this direction. This is known as a component. Now, there are many different types of components that you can have in a circuit. There's about 12 of them that you need to know. Um, so again, cell, battery, a switch when it's like this it's open otherwise it'll be closed so here nothing uh, no current flows so the whole thing turns off but here current can flow you've got a standard resistor uh, and of course you've got other ones as well so look at all of these pause the video make sure you can memorize, memorize them now so what we're going to do is, is the first practical which is investigating how a length of wire can affect resistance so imagine this let's say we have two circuits now let's say they both have the same voltage supply, so 10 volts, 10 volts. Um, and there's a formula that goes like this, V equals IR. So voltage equals current times res resistance. We're going to talk about all the formulas afterwards, but for now, um, if I was to ask you, do you think that uh, in the first circuit, there's more resistance, or do you think there's more resistance in the second circuit? Now, you might think, okay, what's the difference? Well, the difference is that in the second circuit, there's much more wires being used. So the overall length of the circuit is much more longer. Um, so how could we investigate that? Do we think there's going to be a difference or do we think it's going to be the same? So the way we're going to do that is the following. Oh, don't know why. I'll go back here. Oh, quite long. Sorry about that. Okay, so this is our setup. <clears throat> So here we have a electric uh, energy supply. You can either use a battery or even a single cell. But again, make sure you know the orientation. Uh, this is a switch, and we need to use a switch to kind of change the length, the length of the wire. So we have to turn it off when we're touching it. As you can see, there's the wire is continuously going like this. However, now we have crocodile clips, and then the electrons go from here into this wire and then back out. So here's your complete circuit like this. It goes like that. Okay, so what we're going to do, so what we're going to do first is we're going to put the crocodile clips right next to each other. So what we're going to do in, in the whole experiment, keep one stationary and move the other one backwards. And by moving this guy backwards, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be increasing the, dis the distance that the electrons will have to flow. And of course, we have a ruler here so we can measure how long we've increased the distance for. A voltmeter and ammeter. We, the reason we have these two is because we're going to use the formula V equals IR to find the resistance. So remember, resistance now is going to be equal to, when I rearrange V equals IR, that gives me V over I equals R. So voltage, current, I calculate those, and oh, sorry, I measure those, and then we, I can use them to calculate my resistance. So eventually, I'm going to plot, plot length of wire on the x-axis, and I'm going to plot resistance on the y-axis. Now, you should you should theoretically get this line, a straight line. And this shows us that as the length of wire increases, so does the resistance, which means that they are directly proportional. Now, how would you explain this in, in your exam? So let's say you have a six marker. How, how would you explain it? So here are the points you should mention. Number one, you say attach your crocodile clips to the test wire zero centimeters apart. So literally, they're going to be next to each other, the, these two crocodile clips. Uh, the voltmeter should always be in parallel and the ammeter should always be in series. Then you turn on your switch. So you basically, you turn this on. So you close that, turn the switch on. And then you measure what the values on the voltmeter and on the ammeter. Okay, so turn on the switch and measure voltage and current. Then you can use V equals IR to calculate resistance. Then you turn off your switch. So you turn this off, you open it again. And then you take, uh, so you keep one of these crocodiles in place. And you take the other one and you start to move it back. And then you close your switch and then you measure again. And then uh, calculate R. Then you open switch move it back, close the switch, measure, calculate R, open switch, move back, 
close switch, measure, calculate R. So you keep doing that. So rep you rep uh, so turn off switch, move crocodile clips, repeat steps three to five until all the wire has been used. Uh, and then you're going to plot length of wire uh, versus resistance. And you should it should be directly proportional. Now, if they ask you how could you make sure your results are reliable, mention these points. Because uh, over time, the wire may heat up and we know temperature can also affect resistance, leave the switch off until wire cools. So basically, between your readings, when this is on, sometimes the wire could heat up and that could mess up your results. So between your readings, you would leave this off, let everything cool down and then start again. Also keep the thickness of the wire constant. Um, and if they ask you, oh, explain why, let's say you, you, your graph looks like this. So it doesn't go through zero like this one does over here. The reason could be that initially your two crocodile clips were not exactly zero centimeters apart. Even if they were like a millimeter or two millimeters apart, your, your data will not be straight like that. So these are some uh, potential questions they could ask you. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.